Okay, can everybody hear me? <coughs> Excuse me. Let me know if you can hear me and see the slide, please. Tonight I thought we'd do something a little bit different here. We're gonna look at charts and we're gonna look at a live gap. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo. Kathy can put my information in the room. If you're interested after the lecture, <coughs> excuse me, in learning what I do, uh, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. I teach people my method on how to trade gaps. So I thought we'd do something interesting tonight because it's a big night. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there are two big stocks reporting. Actually, there's more. There's a couple big stocks reporting tonight. So I thought we would look at a couple different gaps. So if you don't know what a gap is, this is a gap that's happening live right now. This is Google. The stock is gapping down. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So the U.S. market has a close time at 4 o'clock Eastern. So let's see what was the close here of Google. 1097.18. That's where the stock closed right at 4 o'clock. Where is it now? It's down. So this is the post-market activity. It's down. It's at 1047.64. Okay. And falling, you see the live price now is moving. Stock is trading down, okay? So this isn't a big gap down in the stock. It's a baby gap down, but it's not tomorrow morning. So any time between the close at 4 and the open at 9.30, this stock could continue to move. It could continue lower. It could move back up higher again. The stock had earnings, okay? So what I do every single morning, and you can do it at night when there's gaps at night, which you have right now, you can rate the gap. So I teach in my class a method to rate it, to look at the daily chart of the stock and go through a point rating system. I go through 26 points each morning to determine if the gap rates good enough to go long or short, okay? So I'm looking for institutional buying or selling. So Google right now, is at 1040. See how we're watching here and we're, we're even watching this right now. The price has dropped even more. See this? Okay. Now let's look at another one here. INTC is gapping up. So this stock closed at 4441. Here you see the close at four o'clock. Now where's the price right now? Currently it's up. It's at 4535. This is live, but this is in the after hours. It's called the post market. So gaps can occur anytime at night or in the morning. They occur outside of the hours that the market is open. Stocks again can gap up or down. So this is a bullish gap. This stock is moving higher right now in the pre-market. So I, again, what do I do? I use my rating system, which is based on technical analysis, which I look at the chart. I look at the daily chart of INTC. I'll just blow this up here. And I would rate it to determine if this is a good long because the stock's gapping up or it's buying it to come into this stock on the live day tomorrow and rally it. Is it going to move higher? Okay. Or is in fact it going to move lower? Is this a short? All right. Now let's look at another one. Amazon. Amazon is doing what? Well, let's see where it closed. It closed at 1778.37. Here it is moving. You can see the price. Again, this is live. It's at 1675-ish here. So this is gapping, it looks like, down. Okay. So Amazon is gapping down tonight. Google is gapping down tonight. INTC is gapping up. Let's look at some more. CMG, another big one reporting. Where did this close? Let's look. 423.84, boom. Go over, see the price. 416.97-ish. Again, this is moving. This is live. It's 434. These could be moving for the next hour, hour and a half, longer even, okay? This is doing what? It's down. It's gapping down, okay? Actually, this is moving the least of all. This is not really having that big of a move to me here. So anyways, going back, just looking at Google, I'm going back to Google here again because Google and Amazon have the most action going on them right now. Take a look at Amazon again here. You can see all the bars. 
This is called after hours trading. So the market is closed, closes at four, but you still have people that are taking positions on and off. Now, I don't trade the post market or the pre market, but I definitely watch it because that is where the gap is occurring. Okay. Any questions so far from anyone here? Any questions? Don't be afraid to ask. So when you when you are when you get up in the morning if you're day trading, okay, if say you're a day trader and you and you're doing this thing or you want to be a day trader, how do you know on any given any given day what to trade? There's thousands and thousands and thousands of stocks in the market. So you have to really hone it down to pick because you're not gonna trade 50 different things in a day. You shouldn't even be trading five. You only need one good pick. One pick is all that you need in order to make money in the market. So you have to find and hone in on that one good pick, and I call it conviction. You have to have 100% conviction that that's going to work, that trade, whatever that trade is that you want to do. Now, I'm going to go to what happened yesterday. AT&T was the play yesterday. And I'm going to show you this here, AT&T gap down. Now, I forget when this was, in the morning or at night. Let's blow this up over here. This was in the morning. So AT&T gap down at 8 a.m. Here it is, morning of the 24th. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Here it is, here it is. Here is the open. I'm just going to take this off. Just click that off there. Here's the move of the live day. Here's the sell off. We shorted this, had the drop. Actually, this kept going, set the low of the day late, 10.45 a.m. into 11 o'clock. Well, it broke a little bit more. I shouldn't say that. I guess it went a baby amount, a few little bits into the close here. 20 more cents right into the close. Anyways, this stock was a short, so we shorted this. The stock gap down. I'm gonna move this back over here. But you see it here on the daily where the stock closed on the 23rd at 4 o'clock at 3302. Now, in this case here with AT&T was in the morning. So at night, nothing happened. Boom. Then it gapped down in the morning here. It opened at 3173. And then what did it do? It fell all day. So if you're a day trader, if you're a trader, you would get up in the morning. You would see that AT&T is down. And if you learn my method and my system, you would rate it. Okay, you would rate the gap to determine if it's a good short or a good long. The point is that you have to find one specific thing, determine the directional bias, and then play it with size and you can make a lot of money. It's about the consistency to be profitable as a trader. So I'm consistently, every day, looking for the very, 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 very best thing that I'm going to do every single solitary day, whether long or short. I'm actually going to be honest with you right now, I'm not crazy about anything tonight. So I will be looking for something something different tomorrow morning. Actually, look at this one here. This is trying to flip. See, this is moving again, close to 423.84. Now it's at, at CMG, it's at 423.55. This is trying to go over. This is trying to move now up. Do you see how it's still moving? Amazon's still down, looks like it has further to go. Google looks a little bit better than it did a couple minutes ago. This is trying to hang on here. INTC is still up. This is up and this looks like it's going to stay up so far. Although you can see here the previous move was way up 47.19. It's only trading here at 45.60. So it was up here at one point. This is tonight. This is all happening live. This move happened, boom, right at four. See it? Any questions so far from anyone? So again, the idea of trading is you only need one trade. You only need one move. How do you make a lot of money? You just use it with size. But it's very challenging or difficult mentally and emotionally, even if financially you can afford it, to trade with size if you don't have what I call 100% conviction that the trade's going to work, okay? Because you you're still have to put your own money at risk when you take a trade. You've got to put the money on. Otherwise, you're not going to make any money. So one good solid move in something will give you profit, but you have to believe that the trade is going to go in that direction, whether long or short. So in the case of what I look at in the gap, I'm looking to see if institutional buying or selling is going to create a move in the stock. Momentum and volatility, okay? 
So if a stock is going to move higher, if buying is going to come in, institutional buying, big, 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 big buying, actually let's look at Microsoft, buying came into this today, at least on the live day. Now this is down tonight because the other stocks in the sector are down, but at one point today, this stock went all the way up. Looks like the high was 109.15. So actually 109.27, I'm sorry. So this was all the way up here by four. Now this is down tonight. So you can see here, this is down two bucks because what the other t uh, stocks in the sector are down, this has moved this down. So this is gonna gap down tomorrow. But anyways, earlier today, the buying came into it. This is in Microsoft, okay? This is trying to hold on. Anyways, this was buying that came in and the stock rallied. This was a gap up. Stock closed the night before at 102.32. Boom. Open in the morning where? 106.55. So this gapped up about four bucks this morning from the previous night, Wednesday night, into Thursday morning, which was today. So you could have gone long the stock today if you wanted you to make money. We'll look at another one that happened today, Twitter. Twitter, a nice rally in the morning. This is down tonight with the whole sector too, but uh, Microsoft actually was better today, but this had to move. I'm gonna take this off here in the morning. And the best, the best time to trade really is the morning as a day trader, okay? And specifically as a gap trader. In and out, in and out in 30 minutes, in and out in 30 minutes, in and out in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. So this was Twitter. Twitter closed last night. Where? At 27.54. Boom. Open in the morning. 31.32. So this stock gap up. So you would have rated it. If it rated well, what would you have done? You would have looked to go long it. If you went long it in here, boom, you got the move up. You could have gone long the stock in here, run 31.50, had a nice $2 flush. And even if you didn't hold it into 10 o'clock, even if you held it into here, you still got a buck. And then you would have been out, okay? Now this is down, obviously, with everything else in the sector. Twitter. But Twitter was a bullish gap, okay? So any questions so far? So the whole thing about trading, okay? The whole, whole thing about trading, the way that you become profitable, the way that you make money, the way that you can do it, is the focus, the focus on one ticker symbol, one directional bias, whether it's going long or short, one a day, okay? Looking for institutional money to come in and lift the stock higher if you're gonna buy it or you want it to drop if it's gonna fall lower. And that's how you make money. Does anyone have any questions about anything so far here? Quiet group tonight. No one has any questions about anything? Very quiet bunch. Well, it's very interesting. I'll just look at the market here for, for everybody uh, just really quickly here tonight. But when, you're, when you are trading, okay, when you're looking to trade, if you're a day trader that doesn't have a strategy or doesn't have a focus for, or for any one particular day, and you are in, you know, involved in the market, actively trading you know, in, this, in this market right now, it, this market has been very volatile. If you've been looking to buy support, you've been hurt. Market hasn't held any supports here recently. If you are shorting this market, that's not a good idea either. Why? Market is still in an uptrend too, okay? And as you can see, we had the pushback today. We had the pushback two days ago, the rally. So if you are trading this market and you're using a system where you need the market in order to have a good trade on the day as a day trade, you're getting creamed here because the market's been very, very challenging to read, okay? And one of the things the market does most days is guess what? gap. The market gaps almost every single solitary day. So if you learn my method and system, you will also be better able to read the market because the market gaps. But the market, I mean the SPY, the QQQs, or the, or the diamonds, which is the DIA symbol. That's what I mean by the market. But if you learn how to read the market, it will help you improve your, your overall trading for overnight trades, for swing trades, and for options trades if you're holding stocks overnight. 
But if, you, if you're an active day trader and you need the market to get the moves, you're getting creamed here in the last couple of weeks because the market hasn't done anything that's made any sense, really, if you look at the overall trend because we look higher, we look lower, we look one thing or the other. Every day I'm looking for something stock specific. So what I'm doing, if it's AT&T, I'm looking to short AT&T and I don't care if the market rallies or not, all right? I do my evaluation, DF asked a question, good question, in the morning, but I could do it at night. I think it, I'm a morning person, so it works better for my schedule. I'm an Eastern time zone in New York. I'm a morning person, I get up early and I like to get up and I like to do it in the morning and I like to prep early. Also, things can change. Like we'll go back and look at this now as we're talking, this is changing. So at this moment, Amazon he is here at 1670. Will this look like this tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.? It may look completely different. This may be gapping up. I mean, this is not a crushing gap in this stock. Yes, it's down tonight. Yes, that's true. This isn't a crushing gap here in Amazon. And neither is this here in Google. Now, these things are down, but I'm a little bit surprised. I got to be honest with you. These are not big moves in these stocks. This is not big at all. So this could look completely different in the morning. Yes, you can rate things at night. And if you're in the West Coast and it works out better for your schedule, rate it at night. But you still got to double, triple check it in the morning. But things that happen in the morning that are new, like AT&T, sometimes they have earnings come out in the morning. And guess what? Then you got to do them in the morning because they don't happen till the morning. So then I just like to do it in the morning. No, nothing with futures at all. This is all equity trading in which you would take an equity position, however many shares you want to take of the stock that you want to trade in an active day trading account, or you can do it as an option trade. You can do options as day trades, or you can do an option and hold it overnight. For example, the most recent call I had in an option was this MMM. This was to buy the put. This, you could have day traded. We day traded this a couple days ago. I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, here, the 23rd. So that was a day trade there to do as an equity trade. Now this is kind of expensive, it's over $100, so you might have wanted to do the put. Now I did call the put in the option letter, the put worked. It worked the next day, the following day, so you had to hold the put overnight and then into the drop today. Galahad, I'm very proud of you for getting out of this, this is a good exit today. You might have actually got out of this close to the low of the day. Anyways, this was one where it took a second day down to get the drop or boom. You can do these for a day if you want, but sometimes they take a little bit longer to go in the option. But in this case here, you would have looked to do it any one of two ways, depending on how it worked out for your account. Because if you don't want to short as an equity trade something that, that at this price point, then you would have bought the put. Because a put only has a cost associated with it where you pay whatever the contract costs. So I, do, I do nothing with futures. Um, any other questions? That was a good question. Anyways, my observation of these things here is this. These will look completely different tomorrow morning. So I'm a little bit surprised that Amazon and Google don't have any, they're not, they're not having any big moves at all. This is not a big move. This is not a big move either. So I'm really surprised here, and it's almost 5 o'clock, which means these aren't going to have big moves tonight. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to have a big move tomorrow on the live day, but I'm saying right now, looking at this in, in the nighttime, the earnings are out, okay? The stocks are moving, that's true. They're both gapping down, that's true. But I'm, I don't think these stocks are not going to move at all tomorrow. So it's very interesting because these are not crushing down gaps for these stocks. So we'll have to see exactly what happens tomorrow. I'm shocked that neither one of these stocks had a big move on the earnings tonight, and that's exactly what happened. And I gotta be honest with you, I watch these stocks every single earnings season I've had for umpteen years, and I can't even remember the last time that I actually looked at these that they actually didn't have a big move on the earnings. Like, I can't even tell you, like, actually, I don't even remember when the last time I even happened, if it ever even happened. So yes, they're down, but these are not big moves. So that's definitely, definitely surprising. DF is saying not much of a gap thus far may turn up. Well, I'm not going to predict that now because right now I'm seeing selling. I mean, it's hard to predict there would be buying coming in when in the live time it, we're seeing selling. 
this is selling right now. So we, we see the selling and that's the story. But I'm telling you that these stocks normally have Jimungo moves on the actual earnings. Jimungo move up or Jimungo move down. And I'm saying this move is down, but it's not Jimungo. Yes, you had a perfect exit on MMM Galahad. Thank God. Um, actually, while you guys hang on here, I'm going to take this off. I just want to see what's out tomorrow morning. So hang on. Let's look at something that didn't come out yet. Just for so. That is not going to come out until tomorrow morning. And ask me any other questions that you might have here. Um... Oh, there was something else I wanted to look at for the night that I liked. It was none of these. What was the one I liked tonight that I wanted to look at? And I was talking about earlier. Matt. Oh, I don't like the way that looks. Shoot. And there was one other one. VeriSign. not doing anything either and there was one other one I wanted to look at I just want to see if there's anything good else out here tonight and then I'll look at tomorrow Matt was the one that I liked but I don't like it now and, and again this is for tomorrow it's a play for tomorrow DFS that was the other one let me just see what that's doing DFS that is not moving at all. All right, let's look at it tomorrow. If you open up a retail trading account, you have to call the broker. I'm not a broker, but a retail trading account requires 25,000 in margin to actively day trade every day in and out. Yes. If you go to, to a proprietary day trading account, uh, they have usually about a 2,500 minimum balance. Some people require a 5,000 minimum balance. Your buying power would be 10 to 1 margin. It's called a proprietary day trading account. You can Google it and you can actively trade then. If you've never heard of it, there's about a bazillion places out there and many day traders are trading at places like that who do not have 25,000, who also get much more buying power. Now let's look at what's out here tomorrow. This is anything I like. CL. I'll look at that. That's the only thing I really see on here. CL. Let's look at that. My suggestion to you if you've been looking and thinking about day trading and you want to get actively into it, this reports tomorrow morning. Colgate. I, I don't know what this does, but this is a watch. CL here. I'll put it in the room. Again, I don't know what time, but you can you can watch it. This will happen in the pre-market. Um, my suggestion is to start out with a prop account, build your account up, and then move over to a retail account if that's what you want to do. The only benefit of having a retail account versus a prop account, because you have to put up more money and you get less margin, is to, that you could pull your money out whenever you want. So with a prop place, you typically can't do that. They usually only once or twice a month. With a, a, a retail account, if you want to take money out today, you can. So you see here, Amazon is trading a little bit down more. Google's trading a little bit down more. INTC is trading up. Who knows? We might be going long tomorrow, INTC. I mean, anything's possible. Anything's possible here at all. But I don't know what these stocks are going to look like tomorrow morning. So this was a good lesson tonight on live gaps. I, I don't have a PowerPoint tonight. I just wanted to go over the actual. Actually, I will bring up the information about the class. But I just wanted to talk tonight about charts because I thought, 
I thought this is a good, I rarely do this. And, and really, this is what the meat and potatoes of what I do every day is looking at gaps. And very few people understand gaps. They don't know what they are. They don't understand the significance of them. This is how I have been able to call the market or stocks. Now, neither one of these things, i got to be honest with you, did what I wanted them to do in an ideal world. And I say in an ideal world because if they had done what I wanted them to do, I would have known immediately what we would have done with them tomorrow or we would have done anything at all. And there would have been options plays in either one of these because of the cost of them. But I don't see anything in here that makes me think we're going to do anything with them tomorrow. And that's kind of a bummer. But at least you don't lose money. But when something, I can tell and I know when something does something that I will know how to do it when I see it in the gap. But you don't always get it. But that's what I find so unusual about this right now. I mean, I've just got to be honest with you. This is extremely unusual because of the fact that Normally these stocks have monster moves and they are not right now and I'm telling you that is bizarro world. It's just bizarre. It's just so bizarre I can't tell you how bizarre it is. Here, I'm going to pull up the inf my contact information, the information about the class, but ask me if you have any more specific uh, stock questions. But this is just bizarre. I mean to me. I mean I just, you know, I mean so bizarre that I almost can't even believe it. Actually, here we can go over the trades from October really quickly here. This was the month of October. It's been a good month. Been very, very careful. In fact, today there was nothing. Um, tomorrow, I'm sure that we'll get something, but today there wasn't anything. So this was the beginning of October, and again, it's earnings season. Earnings season, so it's very busy. There's a lot of stocks, a lot of companies. They're all reporting their earnings. It's going all through the month of November. So this month and next month, it's the time to make the money. Um, but I'm just so surprised that those stocks aren't, aren't having big moves tonight. Anyways, good first start to the month. SFIX was a winner. Cenex was a winner. No trades in the fourth. Cost was a huge winner. We can pull that chart up. Close for the holiday on the 8th. KR was a little baby one. Then on the 10th, two trades. One was a loser. One was a winner in the queue. Spy took two chances. That was a good one on the 11th. No trades in the 12th and 15th. 16th was accused. IBM took two shots, but it was a nice, nice one. We can look at that one, too. And second day down, actually had a big move. Got out of this too early. The 18th, good mover on IBM. Then TV day off the 19th. Spy was a loser. Apple, nice winner on the 22nd. MMN, two trades on this. We looked at that chart. I can pull it up again. T was yesterday. Today, no trades. So here's my information about the class. The class price is increasing November 1st to $59.99 US dollars. But if you want to sign up, you can with the old price, $54.99. It's the current price until October 31st. Class is next weekend, not this weekend, but the November 3rd and 4th, 9 to 5. So you'd still do the class and you'd be able to get in in the room and trade and get the calls before earnings season. Now I'm doing an open house tomorrow for one day. If you'd like to come, if you'd like to observe, you can be in the room tomorrow morning. And take the trades if you want or watch and listen, okay? Room opens at 8.30 a.m. If you want to come to the room tomorrow or if you want information on the class, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And Kathy, if you can put my information in there. Um, actually, let's look and see where IBM ended up because I have not looked at that in a little bit here. Yeah, look at this. Here's IBM since that. Look at that. So this was I. So this is IBM. Did this one here was a good one. Here's one get out early. Look at what it did. It still kept going this day. Didn't break 130. Then it actually did. Try to hang on, couldn't do it. Dropped. This is just a disaster here. Look at this. Yeah, I hadn't looked at this for a couple of days. All the way down to 125.14. So you see here again the momentum, okay? This is the power in the gap. Not only can you day trade gaps, you can do them for options or swing trades. It can help you with long-term investments because you're reading the chart. You're determining, am I gonna go long this? Am I gonna short this? Or if I'm long it, am I gonna sell it? Because it isn't gonna fall because it gapped down like something like this IBM. Like if you were long the stock in IBM, you're seriously regretting if you're long it and you didn't get out of it when the earnings failed and it dropped down to that 136 level. You'd be, look at this here now. You'd be losing more money. And again, I'm saying if you were long, so the system can help you with that as far as managing positions you're in where you're the opposite direction to tell you where to get out of it if, in fact, you want to get out of it. But if you were in this long, you should have got out of this, you know, way back on the 17th. Okay? 
this absolutely looks slower this looks slower and actually this looks slower too even though this really had the move for the put that it just in and out but this absolutely this mmmn looks slower for sure as well but ibm just i completely forgot about this to look at this i mean this is just like not good at all for the stock it's crazy yep so we will see what happens tomorrow um the market's trying to hang on here tonight it's really making the biggest attempt it's ever had in its life but the fact is that these things are moving they definitely are down they're not trading the way that i would expect them to normally trade in the earnings which means they're not having big moves and typically these stocks do sometimes they're up sometimes they're down now could this have a big move tomorrow yes but i highly doubt it now and if it does it's probably going to be down as far as between now and to the open now what it does after 9 30 we have to watch and wait and see but i don't see any to play here which is kind of a bummer this is these two earnings like are a bust which means you can't short it can't go long it doesn't mean they're not going to rally tomorrow in the day but I'm telling you, like the earnings to play these things at all, even as an option trade, look like bust to me. And that's kind of a shame. So INTC is my favorite watch tonight. It is, a, it, it's a long, it's a long. So I don't know where this opens tomorrow morning. I am going to be rating this gap tomorrow morning. It's the only thing that's interesting. I'm, I don't see any interesting shorts whatsoever at all tonight. And that's kind of a bummer. And CMG look it's completely flipped so it was see this is why i like to wait to the morning somebody asked me about this earlier look it was down and now it's up see look at that and again this is also why i don't do any active trading in the post and pre-market it's i mean something can move against you completely 100 percent, and particularly in the earnings even though they can pay big if you're in the right direction it's just better to trade in the live live day this was at 415 for 1250 now it's up 30 points look at that i think this is gonna hold now up it was all the way up at 460 here look at that this is live people 460 25 so a couple of minutes ago at 446 that's where this puppy was look at that it was there I, do, I don't think we're going to be doing this though so i will watch intc i will write this in the morning determine the rating determine if it's a good long and we'll look for something else market is an unknown because there's a gdp number out tomorrow morning it will move the market no matter what up or down i don't know these things are down they're not down enough they're kind of a waste of energy it, it's very odd it's unusual in fact it's so unusual i wonder if there's something here to, to to get away to take away from this i have to think about it does anyone have any questions about anything they want to ask me right now? Again, the class is November 3rd and 4th. And if you're interested in signing up, the deadline to get the current price is October 31st, Halloween, next Wednesday. If you want to come to the trial tomorrow morning for one day, see what we get. You can observe. Email me if you would like to come in for the trial at melissa at the stockswish.com. Does anyone have any questions about any stocks, any charts, any gaps, anything about my system, the class, anything at all? Feel free to ask. Quiet group tonight, a couple questions. If you want a referral for a broker, you can always email me. <coughs> but there's a million places out there. You won't have any problem finding a broker whatsoever at all. Okay. Listen, have a great night, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. I will see some of you tomorrow morning in the trading room. If you're interested in the trial, email me at melissathestockswish.com. And have a great night, everyone. Okay. Thank you.